Thank you for listening to Scotch Talks podcast. My name is Scotch. Welcome, welcome. Today we have on Jake Ricker. He's a San Francisco based street photographer. Uh, really incredible eye, really incredible everything. Beautiful photos that will go down in history of San Francisco. Um, so he's working on a new project and I wanted to bring him in to talk about it. He's taking his street photographer style, his everything, right, that he's learned on the streets and now focusing all his attention on the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, we'll get into it and hear the actual days, but I think around 200 something days he spent, wait, two years on the bridge and 2019 almost every single day on the bridge for seven, eight hours at a time without eating, without drinking water during the entire time. He's a crazy motherfucker in the best way possible. I've seen some of these photos. I am a firm believer that these photos will go down in history, let alone this book will go down in history beyond a lot of coffee tables on, in San Francisco for people who live here, for people who don't. Um, they're iconic photos I believe will go down in history forever. So uh, it's great to uh, hear about his process um, and hear what he's experiencing going through while it's happening. I would love to have him on afterwards to um, after this project is done, the art shows have happened and the book is out to hear about the process of making the book, to hear about the struggles, the difficulties, the victories of making that book to hear, you know, he, he doesn't know when this book will be done or when this project will be done. Right. Um, because the bridge just keeps giving him more and more to photograph. Uh, so we'll see when he when he gets finished and how he feels about finishing a project that he spent almost two years on so far. Um, it will probably be three years and a couple months. But uh, yeah, the photos are incredible. He's incredible. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, just... Uh, Shoot a, a DM if you have any people that you know that you want to hear, any artists that you want to hear. Shoot me a DM at Scotch Talks on Instagram. I believe that's what it is. <laughs> I haven't been on Instagram for like three months now. But uh, shoot me a DM on there if you have anybody that you want me to talk to or about their work with and uh, people you would love to hear. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Okay. I don't nothing specific. Cool. Hello, welcome to the Scotch Talks podcast. I'm your host Scotch. Today our guest is Jake Ricker. He's working on a book right now about the Golden Gate Bridge. Been there for how many days? Years? Probably at least 200 trips, maybe more. 200 trips to no, Golden Gate way Bridge. More than that actually, probably like 400 trips. 400 trips to Golden Gate Bridge. About it like almost 2 years going pretty hard the last year okay yeah and i'm jake hi <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i would say like i kind of started going like late 2017 okay. like a couple times like a like i'd go like at least a day or two a week just kind of feeling it and then I started going like maybe three or four times a week for like the rest of like 2018 or so. And then 2019, I started just going at least five days a week, sometimes six or seven. So this is the biggest project that you've worked on, right? Yeah. I mean, I was a bike messenger for nine years and every day I was taking photos while working. And that was like why I was a messenger kind of is I wanted to be out taking photos and like documenting stuff. Mm. So that was like a project that didn't feel like a project because I was like not not that I'm forcing myself to go to the bridge because it's not that it's not a struggle for me like I love going there but like I wasn't like forcing myself like to as a messenger I wasn't like forcing myself to be a certain place right I would just go to work every day and shoot what I saw but with the bridge I literally have to like set aside time and when people invite me to things on Saturday afternoons, I have to say I can't go because I'm at the bridge <laughs> like all day. I was just going to invite you somewhere Saturday afternoon. Yeah, 
No, it's, <laughs> no, it's like been a thing where people have been like, hey, like I have this like barbecue thing, like you should come. I'm like, yeah, I can't. Like, Why? <laughs> and at first, for like the first year and a half, I didn't even tell anyone I was going to the bridge. I oh. was just kind of keeping it secret. And so people would be like. Why were you keeping it a secret? I don't know. I just wanted to do my own thing and I didn't want. Other people to know? I just didn't want other people to know, or I didn't want people to just be like, oh, maybe there's good photos out there too. I should go there. Yeah. I just kind of didn't even want to bring it up, and I didn't want to tell anyone. I just wanted to, like, have it be my own thing, and I haven't seen anyone else out there, so it's been good. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It just was, like, a thing I just kind of wanted to, like, I didn't want to, like, jinx myself. I just wanted to do this thing and not talk about it and see what where it went on its own rather than, like, what people thought it could be or what I thought it could be or meet some expectation or something. If that makes sense. I don't know. I just kind of did it to do it just to see where it would go. And then now I talk about it and post like little videos about it, but I don't post any photos. Mm. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep 99% of it like unseen. Yeah. Is there a special part about keeping it unseen compared to like releasing it slowly like posting images on it, like why? Um, I think like leading up to a show, I think it's normal for like certain artists to like release, whether it's a painting or a photo or whatever, like an image or two as a promotional thing to like get you ready for a show or to like announce a date or like a book thing or Mm -hmm. have the cover of your book. If you have an image on the cover, I feel like that stuff's normal. And I I will do that probably, but I feel like, just in the last couple of years, every time I go to like a local show or something, and it's not the end of the world because I like seeing stuff physical, like framed or bigger on that's not on like a, a screen, like a computer screen or an iPhone screen or something. But I feel like too many times I go to a show and I'm like, I've seen all of this before. Mm-hmm. And not that it's, like I said, not that it's not better to see it on a larger scale but I like want to be surprised every now and then or I want to surprise people so I feel like the work will mean more to me if it's like released all at once and it's more surprising and more I feel like it'll make more of an impact so I'm at least for me in the way I was like raised on like visual stuff like skateboarding was a huge part of my life for since like the age of like 10 till now you know it's like but I remember before the internet really took hold or like, I guess not even the internet because the internet was always around, but the like social media aspect of it, of certain skate videos would like come out and it like, it mattered like what song the skateboarder edited his part Mm -hmm. to and spots and tricks (laughs) were kept secret. So I guess if you don't, if you're listening to this and you don't skateboard or you don't know what I'm talking about, like there's like famous skate spots or like handrails or gaps or something and like people would do a certain trick down them or over them or whatever and it was almost like kept secret like everyone there didn't talk about it until it like the video premiered and then it was like holy crap like this person did that down this yeah and everyone is you would try to like one up it and (laughs) so it's like that sort of like conditioned me to like keep stuff more secret and release it when in its final form rather yeah. than little tricks. Cause now you have like skateboarders on Instagram or like Thrasher releasing parts instead of a video dropping. And I remember like watching a video like front to back and having like the opening part was a very specific thing. And the ender of the video like was like the best skater on that team usually ended the video and you couldn't wait for that part to get to that point. And I don't know, I feel like that kind of made me like slow down even though things are going faster and more like, I guess like, um, like, like I said, like with the internet, like all these parts are coming out so fast. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's better to like slow down. And I mean, I'm shooting it all on film anyway. So it's like, it's a slow process. I'm not like in a rush. It's not like an instant gratification where I'm like looking at the image right after I took it. So I'm not in any rush. Yeah. But I think it'll be better the way it's going. So I don't know. That's how I do things. Hopefully people will like understand that or it'll, yeah. So why the bridge? Um, And also what, what separates from you taking photos there compared to 
Joe Schmo down the street. I feel like Joe Schmo down the street <laughs> is nowhere near obsessive as me. Like, he won't go six days a week for six years. days a week. Jesus. So it's like, and not that I'm in a competition with anyone else, <laughs> but if that's the difference, that's probably the difference. It's yeah. like, I mean, the bridge has been there for 82 years. There's been some amazing photos taken there. I think there's certain photographers, like there's, there's just these like iconic photos from the bridge. Like I remember like the opening day of the bridge, there's like a black and white photo where it was like pedestrian day and there's only people walking on the bridge. Yeah. Like I've never seen another photo like that and I don't think there ever will be again. Yeah. And I think in maybe 80, 1987 was like the 50 year anniversary. And I think there was like a famous like SF Chronicle photographer. It was either shot from like the hill like the south side or maybe from a helicopter where it was just like 100,000 people on the bridge. Wow. And like that photo is amazing. And I think that day the bridge bowed a little bit. Like it flattened out where it usually it never has. And so Holy I think crap. it like met its like weight limit. It was kind of like unsafe, I think. With all those people? Because I don't think they expected that many people to like show Holy up shit. to the anniversary or something. Where did that, all those people park? Dude, I don't know. Because <laughs> there's a parking struggle for just a normal day. Yeah. So I don't know what they did. Oh, my God. But yeah. So, like, I, you've seen these iconic photos. or There's this SF Chronicle photo where um, it's, like, gridlock traffic. And there's just a dude standing on the hood. Or not even the hood, the roof of his car. Mm -hmm. And that photo is amazing. And I feel like I saw these photos, like, my whole life. Or, like, my whole photographic life when I was, like, paying attention to photos. And I was like, these are great photos. But then... It kind of starts and stops there. Like, yeah, there's a couple more, but we all have seen like the landscape photos yeah. of like from, from the, the, hill. the postcard shots. Yeah. And sometimes those are great, but they've been done to death. <laughs> and I don't know anyone else that has like made a body. So I guess that's what I'm getting at. Like those photographers took amazing photos and then like never really went back. And mm -hmm. I like started going there and I got like a couple of good shots and I was like, damn, there's kind of something here. And I just kept going back. And what I wanted, were those first couple of shots like? Do you remember? I kind of, when I first started going there, it was just like either being like a tourist in my own city or just showing friends from out of town, like but just playing tourist for the day. Mm. And so I would go there and then I would always have a camera on me. And so every now and then I'd get like a shot that I liked from there. Right. And I mean, but that was years ago. I didn't even think about it. I just kind of just went there. Mm. And then when I stopped being a messenger in like September 2017, I I did downtown for nine years, you know what I mean? And I, I kept going there even after I was a messenger. Right. And I was like, dude, I'm like, I just, I'll go back, but I just, there was, I wasn't getting much out of it. I was just kind of like walking around and I wasn't really, not uninspired or anything like that. I just was like, I don't have a reason to be here anymore or where work was my reason kind of. And then I don't know, I just started going to like other parts of the city to try to find like a new area to shoot and just kind of do something different. And like, you kind of like asked like why the bridge? And it's like one of the places I would go to like for a couple weeks was ocean beach mm -hmm. and like Sutra baths area or like cliff house, just that stretch. And like, there's, cool things around there like I got some good shots but I realized when I got the film back like unless you've been there it could be any beach along the west coast mm -hmm. like it could be Huntington Beach or Ocean Be or um, like Mission Beach in San Diego or something like that like it wasn't that defining but I realized when I would go to the bridge like even if you've never been to the Golden Gate Bridge you know it's the Golden Gate Bridge and that instantly like clicked and I was like all right so I was like testing out a few places in the city and Ocean Beach was one of them and I would go to the bridge and like that's when I was like looking back at all the negatives from like the last month or two of like different places I had gone for a couple of weeks and then the bridge was just like an obvious choice of like I remember when I went to Sydney, Australia for the first time and like saw the opera house. It's like I've never been to the opera. I don't have any interest in going to the opera but we all know no, that opera. famous building. <laughs> yeah. And it was like that, like, even if you've never been there, you know about it, mm -hmm. you know about the bridge. And then when I started kind of like looking into it more, I just saw that no one else had really ever done a body of work on the bridge. Yeah. 
which was surprising to me. Like, like mm-hmm. I said, you've, we've all seen those like famous postcard shots mm-hmm. and those serve a purpose for sure. But I just felt like I like being like on the sidewalk with the people and like those to me are so foreign and removed from like the actual feeling and the vibe of the bridge right. of like being on it and how it's like usually pretty damn windy and there is such a good view from the bridge rather than a view of the bridge. Right. And so, I don't know, I just got like obsessed and like once I just made that decision, I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to go here like a few days a week. And then now it's just basically every single day. And I don't know when I'll be done, but I just go until, I don't know. I just don't like half-assing anything. And so the fact that like, I feel like I'm onto something and I'm like really satisfied with the work. I want to make it as like best as it possibly can be. And I want to have as many opportunities to get shots while I'm there. So I don't know. I usually go like around 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. But now it's kind of like getting the light gets less sooner. So I don't know. Usually I leave around six or so now. But yeah, I mean, I've gone there like 6 a.m. before. Mm -hmm. It's like not that many people. and It's pretty weird, but. I mean, I try to just do different stuff and go as many times as I can, different times. And But I'd say, like, <clears throat> my main time is, like, the 10 to 6, 11 to 6 kind of vibe. And I don't know. So far, so good. Damn. Yeah. And then, like, I have that little health app on my iPhone. And I realized, <laughs> like, a year in that it, like, was tracking how many miles I was walking. <laughs> And How so many miles? every now and then I'll look at it. It's like around 10 miles a day, Fuck. but it could be like eight miles or seven miles some days. Okay. And what? 14 is 14 to 15. I think is like the most I've ever walked in one day. on the Gotcha. Bridge. What do you do for food and water out there? I don't eat. And there is a little, there is like a little cafe a fountain and there is a cafe. But so, that's it for like miles. Yeah. So I usually don't eat breakfast and I usually don't drink water when I'm out there. So if I've been there like 300 times or 400 times or so, I haven't kept track, which I probably should have done from the beginning. I guess I can look back at the app and anything over like five miles that day is probably a day I was at the bridge. Mm -hmm. I guess I could do that, but I haven't. I'm just basing it off of like, if you take like the last six months to a year, and I go at least five or six days a week, that's maybe four or five days a month I'm not there. And if you take like those four or five days and you like times them by like 10 to 12 months or whatever, I mean, you have about 50 to 60 days or so. Mm -hmm. And so minus that by like the year 365, it's about 300 days. So it's like if I've gone for a year and a half to almost two years, I would say it's about 300 days I've gone, maybe more, but definitely not less than 200. So I kind of like look at it that way. And then, yeah, it's like as far as food and stuff, it's like out of those three or 400 days I've gone, I maybe have bought like a little cookie at the cafe because they have vegan cookies. That's like the only thing I think they have that's (laughs) vegan. I would say I've maybe done that four times. Okay. So I've eaten something there four times, maybe. Wow. And then I've drinking water or stopped to get water maybe 20 or 30 times total. Maybe a little bit more. Are you like starving? No. Or what's happening? Because you're like walking for 10 miles. It's super weird. I don't know. I not guess when eating, I'm not done, drinking. When I'm done, I'm hungry and thirsty. Got you. But I don't really think about it when I'm out there. It's probably not the best thing to do, but I'm not like <laughs> struggling when I'm out. I'm not like the famous like 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 Chevy Chase Monument Valley National Lampoon's vacation like walk in the desert struggling <laughs> like with my shirt on my head um, <laughs> um I don't know do you know that scene that I'm talking about not really okay it's like but I can imagine it the National Lampoon's vacation when they go to like Wally World okay and they're like driving cross country and then they stop in Monument Valley and he crashes the car and has to go get help oh shit so he just like walks through the desert but it's like a really funny scene that's such a good movie yeah I mean you should rewatch it because it's so good but yeah that scene people will know okay 
Like, he's just like <laughs> walking with his shirt on his head and just out of it. I'm not right. doing that when I'm out there. I'm still definitely like involved in the process, but yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. I just try to be out there as much as I can while I'm out there. But every mm. now and then I like have to use the restroom or something, which I've like missed shots because of that. It sucks. Like I'll get back from the bathroom and just cop cars will be everywhere. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Shit. So that sucks. Mm. It's only, that's only happened one time, but I definitely don't forget. And I like know what shot I missed and it kind of sucks. Mm. But yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you showed me a couple photos last time that we met up. Um, just for the listeners out there, like <clears throat> of the bridge and of some shots of the bridge that you've taken or at the bridge, should I say. Um, and they're just so unique to like your photographic style, but somewhere else with different colors and different people as subjects. And it's just uh, yeah, really fucking great to see. Um, thanks. And yeah, I have no doubt that's going to do well. Yeah. I mean, I just kind of, I definitely approach the bridge with like a no rules, kind of like candid street style stuff that I have. Mm -hmm. And like, I shoot everything no matter like the situation, like there's been super fucked up things that have happened out there and there's been like funny things and bizarre things and beautiful things. And I just kind of like shoot it no matter what. And maybe some of it will be in the book and maybe some of it won't be in the book. Like maybe the darker stuff won't be, maybe it will be like, I don't know yet, but it's definitely like a part of the bridge and like, right. I don't know. The only, I really don't try to like limit myself at all or like have rules, but there's definitely been times where I'm like, that's either like, I don't know. There's been a couple shots where I just like didn't shoot it because it was either just not right or something. I don't know. But I mm. definitely it's rare. I can only think of like one or two times where I just like didn't shoot it. But are those like when people are jumping? Yeah, or, or like or like children. I try not to shoot photos of unless it's just like too funny and like because I'm not trying to like bum a parent out or anything. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like adults like if. I'm guessing the people listening to this have seen my work before. So it's like, obviously I've taken pretty crazy photos of like crazy situations or some like homelessness or like crazy stuff like that. And like mixed reviews on some of it. Like a lot of people like it. Some of it, like some people don't, but I feel like adults have a choice of like how they enter the world and like children don't, they're kind of just existing wherever their parents go and like they don't dress themselves and right. I feel like I'm way better. I, I don't know. It's easier for me to like take a photo of an adult doing something weird or crazy or funny or beautiful <laughs> or whatever. Compared than, to like, a child. kid. Yeah. And like, I don't want to bum anybody out. And I would, if I had a kid and like some guy took a photo, obviously I would like assess the situation before like reacting. And I haven't ever had a bad experience. Like no parent has ever like flipped out on me or anything, but I just I don't even want to make them like think about it, mm -hmm. but there's been times where I'll totally like smile and take the photo and the parent knows why it's funny and knows why I'm taking the photo. Right, and, like, right. It's like a cute like thing that unfolds and it's totally understandable, but I definitely like watch it with children just because I don't know. They're just, like I said, they're like young and they don't choose how they enter the world. And it's definitely like, I know people that just won't shoot a child at all. Right. And that's cool too. I make it like a pretty rare thing. So there's been times where like, I just didn't because of, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but I think you understand. Yeah. And I those remember. are like the only rules I kind of have, like right. depending on, like I've pulled people back over the railing. I could have taken a photo and could have let them jump. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take that photo. Like that, easily could have happened but they're like i mean people say like oh there's a time to be a photographer and there's a time to be a human it's like i'm not even like saying that i'm just saying like i couldn't watch someone just jump without trying but right. i've seen people jump too and there's nothing i could have done about it so i mean that's like a whole other thing we can get into that too but yeah there's i would say <laughs> three people there's three people i've pulled back over and like 
other people I've like helped that didn't go over the rail yet. But those there's like three people that were over the rail about to jump. One was pretty gnarly where like I basically had to like fight the person back over the railing. They like did not want to come back. Oh over. man. And one, two of the people came back over Jesus. like with like they came back over on their own and I like helped them. But I like was holding on to them so they didn't jump before that happened. But yeah, the one person was like fighting me with every like fiber of their being. And that was pretty gnarly for me because I felt guilty after because I was like, fuck, like they were going through something. I have no idea what they were going through. And I felt guilty that I like made them survive another day of pain or something. Mm. So there was like that. But then I don't know. I haven't talked. I haven't talked to the like police officers about that person. So I don't know how they feel about me now. But I know like a couple of the people were like thankful that someone was there to like talk with yeah. them. And they're like time of need or whatever but yeah there's like a couple other people that weren't over the rail that I just picked up on that vibe like they were out there alone they were kind of just appearing sad and doing not like weird behavior like they were behaving weird because it made me notice them but like I, I don't mean it like that I just noticed them and kind of watched them for a minute from like 30 feet away and I was just like what? so like the way that happened it's so hard to explain like all of this stuff too. So it's like, forgive me. But <laughs> so like, I've kind of become friends with some of the bridge police. And so for those of you people that don't know, so we can just get into this and then we can get into other stuff. So yeah. like people jump from the Golden Gate Bridge all the time. All the time. Um, it's like, do you know like the number? Among it's like about 60 a year. That's the thing. It's not. Oh, per, 60 a year. Okay. So it's like, or not maybe even 50 a year. Yeah. Good, but it's so like, still awful, but. It's so, yeah, it's like supposedly the suicide capital of America or something or like not capital, but like most popular, most popular place. place, public place or something. I don't even know if that's like a title or how you would describe it. Yeah. But that's like what I've kind of heard. And I guess for people who've never looked into it, um, 45,000 or 40,000 people a year commit suicide in the United States. So that's like about wow. 110 to 120 per day, every single day in towns all across America. Holy shit. And when you look at it like that, you're like, all right, 50 states, hundreds of cities in each state, about 100, 100 a day. Yeah, that, I guess that kind of makes sense. Like, but that number to me was so insane. I kind of looked it up like a few weeks ago just to like see what we're dealing with like as a like, just a scale of the United States mm -hmm. of America. And that to me is like an insanely high number. Like I couldn't believe it. But then when you break it down to like, okay, about a hundred a day, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Which is like crazy to think about or even normalize it. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you think of it like that, you're like, okay, 50 or 60 a day or 50 or 60 a year at the bridge sounds like a lot, but it's like nothing compared to like the overall like problem with like depression and mental illness or whatever you want to call it of like what's going on right now so like right there it sounds like a high number at the bridge when you just hear the number but then when you compare it to like 40 plus thousand people a year it's i don't want to say it's nothing but it's just nothing compared to that high number i wonder if suicide rates are going up each year or if <clears throat> Has this, I mean, obviously they probably have, right? But, or is this just like a normal part of human society? Like how long has suicide been a quote unquote normalized I thing? Mean, like, like, do you think in like the 1700s people were like committing suicide? I have no idea about any of that stuff. And I'm and by no means an expert. So I'll only share like what I've experienced or what I've kind of looked into as far as like, what's going on out there specifically. And so that's why I kind of brought up the numbers to like go back to this point. So when I was just talking about like the people I have helped, so I've kind of become friends with a couple of the bridge cops out there, mm -hmm. like great group of guys and girls, like they're only there to help people. So like 
there are bridge patrol, like that's what it's called, bridge patrol. And they're like a section of California Highway Patrol, which is like obviously the Golden Gate Bridge is a highway, like yeah. over, like from Marin to San Francisco. And then continues on up north in California to like Oregon and Washington and all that. So it's like a section of that. And so right now they intervene with hundreds of people a year. Like they save hundreds of people that like maybe we're going to jump or we're thinking about jumping or we're over the rail mm-hmm. and got talked back over. And also right now on the bridge, there's like construction of a suicide prevention net thing. So it's like a 20 foot rail that like sticks out 20 feet down from the bridge. Uh-huh. So like you jump into a net rather than like to the water 240 feet below. So I have some issues with that. And this is why. So that construction project is like over $220 million or something like that. They're getting, and I feel like it's just the wrong, I feel like it has the best intentions. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's there to save people, but I just think that $220 million can be so much, can be just better spent somewhere else and like trying to like, solve the problem of like depression or this thing in our society so yeah because like, it's it's stopping the suicides but it's not preventing the the you know build up yeah to so to me like this person. is this is why i feel like it's so important that that thing isn't there i mean it's too late it's already being built it's done it's gonna happen so it's right. whatever so but this is just how i feel about it is right now or up until like you can still jump because there's no net yet. It's just the, the like rails that are sticking out and it's only part of the bridge, like 30, 40% of the bridge is like s- still, it's 80% of the bridge is still like completely wide open or whatever with none right. of these rails. So like right now when people go out to jump or think they're gonna jump, like there's someone there to like help or talk you out of it or to be like a voice in re- like a voice of reason like in this, like worst moment of your life type of thing. And I feel like. Is that person just always on the bridge? I mean, they've stopped people in the parking lot or something. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about that, like the back end of that stuff. It's just like what I've witnessed and seen. So it's like right now there's people like 20 people out, like not out there at all times, but they're out there and it's like, they're there to help. And they've saved hundreds of people, like probably thousands of people since the bridge opened. So like, I'm afraid that when that net goes up, the people that were thinking of going to commit suicide there are going to do it in a more private place where there isn't a resource available. There isn't a voice of reason or whatever you need because they'll get you help and no one gets arrested there. Like they are not trying to like, they'll like detain you and take you off the bridge safely, but like no one gets hit with like charges or something. Like they're not there to like make your life worse or like get you in trouble for feeling something you can't avoid or whatever. So like all the dudes that are guys and girls that I've met out there are like super nice people. They're literally there to help. Like I consider them more like the fire department of like a police officer. Like they're not there trying to like I mean, we've all seen the stereotypical, like, asshole cop behavior, like, giving an old lady a jaywalking ticket or, mm-hmm. like, shutting down, like, there was, like, that famous thing in the SF in Berkeley, like, a couple months back where, like, those cops, like, arrested, like, the little Mexican lady with her, her, her hot dog stand or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, like, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that where you're like, dude, are you really making the world a better place doing that stuff? Right, right. And, like, I can say that, like, I've witnessed tons of stuff where these people have, like, helped in... right. Um, they're only there to help. So I, I'm trying, I'm hoping I'm like explaining this like no, as you well are. as I can. So, so you're so, just nervous. Like if the, or when it does get finished, that suicide yeah. uh, net, right? Like all these people won't be there. Yeah. So, like I feel like when that option of possible suicide is now taken away, those people will like do other things to harm themselves in a private manner where right. there isn't someone there to help like obviously we all know there's a suicide hotline who really uses that i don't know but like i feel like i don't know it's just gonna be i feel like there will be consequences 
to the suicide prevention net that we don't even know about yet. And we won't even know the numbers because the numbers outside of the Golden Gate Bridge are so high mm. into the 40 plus thousands yeah. that like 50 or 60 of those people that would have died on the bridge are only going to be into those numbers, which the numbers are already so high. You would never even know who was it going to go to the bridge and die right, right. or not, you know? So like, so it's a circle back of like why I wanted to like put that out there. So I've become friends with some of the bridge cops. And I would say like in August. Also really quick, how many people have you saved personally? Like I've pulled or pulled up three people back over, over okay. the rail that were over the rail. There wasn't a cop there yet or whatever. Right. And it was just me walking, doing my thing. And they just went over the rail right in front of me. Two of those people I was kind of already like kind of watching and I would like pace back and forth like every like a hundred feet each way so they were never out of my sight what's the demeanor that they have um everyone's different and so like so this is kind of what I was starting to say is so in August and this will like bring back what we were just okay. saying or what you were asking me about so in August one of the bridge cops was like hey like you're out we know you've helped like and I talked to them like more friendly than that but he's like hey like just keep an eye out for like high school younger people mm. in the next month or two so august the beginning of school right so beginning of school like august september is like when like high school and all that and college or just school in general is back in and i was like all right right on nothing really happened for a couple of weeks i didn't really see anything like out of the ordinary and then like i said a couple of weeks go by and i just see like kind of a younger person maybe like definitely under 25 but like over 16 it's so hard to tell these days like mm -hmm. how old people are <laughs> and i just like see his backpack on the ground like 15 feet to the side of him and yeah. he's just standing there and i'm like that's weird like why would you take your backpack off why would you be away from your backpack so i kind of just like walk kept walking like 50 feet or so and i just looked over the rail and acted like i was like taking a photo of the city and just acting mm. like i'm a tourist or something and I kept watching him and he kept just like, um, he, he appeared to me like he was like psyching himself, like up, like breathing and like, just like, le like putting his hands on the rail, but like leaning back and like taking a breath and stuff. And I was like, yeah. all right. And so, Suspicious. yeah. And I mean, dude, people are weird. People do weird shit. I've seen a thousand, I've seen that a hundred times and right. they didn't jump and they were with people and, right. or whatever. So I'm like. I walk back the other way and get like 50 feet away from him on the other side. Again, I'm acting like I'm like taking photos. He doesn't really notice me. And I could, I'm just like, all right, like I've seen enough. Like this is like, at this point it was like 20 minutes or something of this dude just standing in the same spot backpack yeah, off. And I was yeah. like, all right. And I knew there was a bridge cop like at the tower, like not far away. And so I just like started walking towards the bridge cop. And I think that dude noticed me or something because like by the time I got to the cop and looked back, he put his backpack on and started walking away. Mm. And so I tell the dude um, named Chris, like awesome guy. I was like, hey, like there's a kid at like light pole 89 and they're all, they're like numbered. I'm like the blue hoodie, blah, blah, blah. Like his backpack's off. Like, I don't know, something's up with him. Like you should look into it. And as I'm saying that, I look and I'm like, oh shit. Like, so Chris takes off and. Like, I just said, like, as I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, shit, he just moved. But Chris is already, like, far away. Mm -hmm. So Chris passes him and didn't realize. But then when he got to 89 and didn't see that person, he, like, came back. And so that kid passes me and looks at me. And I was like, fuck. Like, I think he saw me talking to the cop. And then the cop took off. So Chris comes back and was like, was it that kid? And I'm like, yeah. So Chris catches back up with him, like, on the other side now, like, of the tower. And just stops him and asks him how he's doing, like asks for his ID or whatever and the kid just makes up a story like oh I'm like visiting like oh whatever. or not makes up a story he just says like oh I'm visiting yeah. just checking out the bridge or whatever and Chris is like okay and um lets the kid go Chris is like and again this has happened that same sort of interaction has happened like a thousand times at these mm -hmm. cops like people are out there for reasons or no reasons or they look suspicious but they're not out there to harm themselves or anything like that so Chris lets him go um, tells me later on, like, yeah, I talked to him, like, I don't know, he seemed fine, like, whatever. I was like, all right. So that's, like, that's a Saturday this happened. And then on a Sunday, I'm there again, 
And this was at like 5.30 or so, like Saturday. And then I'm back there at like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. the next day on Sunday. And I run into another bridge cop that I'm like kind of friends with named Nick. Awesome dude. Like um, <laughs> we're the same age, have a bunch of like stuff in common. He's like really cool dude, like good artist and drawer and stuff. And I just was like, oh, hey, like what's up, man? Like how's your morning? He's like, good, good. Anything crazy happen? Like we always kind of like update each other every yeah. now and then. I'm like, dude, yesterday, like there was this kid I would have bet my life on. Like he was going to jump. Like I just. You were saying this? Or yeah, he was? I was saying this to Nick. Okay. He's like, oh, right on. I was like, I told Chris about it. Chris met up with him. Didn't seem like anything. He's like, yeah, dude, you never know. Whatever. We just chat for a minute. I let him go. I keep walking. Dude, like five to 10 minutes later, that kid passes me. Oh, shit. And I was like go up to Nick. I was like, dude, that kid just passed me, but he didn't see me. And I, I told him what happened again. He's like, right on. And I tell him and Nick goes up to him. I was like, Hey man, like, were you out here yesterday? And he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, we get like briefed or whatever. And like, you match the description. He's like, are you good? Like what's going on? He's like, no, I'm just like last day here. Wanted to come back. And he's like, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, dude, people don't do that. You know, no, he's nobody like, does that. He's like, yeah, well, no, I'm fine. He's like, okay, well, like, there's not much they can like do, you know, right. like you have to basically say like, yes, I'm here to jump. And so whatever, they like get a camera on him and there's like cameras out there. So they just like Nick radios it in like, hey, I'm here with this kid. I just left, like stay on him. Like 30 minutes later, backpack off pacing again. And they pull him off the bridge. And he was like later on admitted like, yeah, I was going to jump. But it took two days, two different cops, two yeah. different crews, because yeah. like, most of the cops work like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the other cops are like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesdays are like interchangeable. Yeah. So like it was a different crew, different day, different time. Sure. And I'm not placing importance on me. I'm just saying like that, like they didn't know about him. Right. And right. like it was me like paying attention, like holy shit, like that's the fucking kid again. And so a week after this, so this is Sunday. Also, really quick, I just want to um, update the people listening. If you don't live in San Francisco, like, you know, going to, like, you go to the bridge once, right? Yeah. You walk it. It's so far removed from everything, you don't go two days in a row. Like, it's yeah, very unless unusual. <laughs> unless you're Jake. Yeah. No, it's definitely, like, out of, <laughs> it's not out of the way, but it's, like, you you go there. You it see is out it, of the You way. get the view. Yeah. You don't go back. Like, you don't right. go back, like, Two it's, days in a row. There's not nothing like, else to see the next yeah. day that you didn't see the day before. There's yeah. nothing new. It's super um, interesting. So yeah, that happened. And it all happened because Nick was like, hey, keep an eye out on young people. And I that dude was like, oh, so it turns out he was going to jump. He was like a high school kid from Texas, came here specifically to jump or something. What? Yeah. Like oh. he was out of town. Like he was not from here and he was visiting. And like, and so the next week, like the next Sunday. I'm walking and I see this girl with her back to the water. So she's facing the street, which is like mm -hmm. uncommon. Usually people that are like going to jump are facing the water, like looking at the drop. And I, but I think she's with people. I didn't even think she was a jumper at first. Right. So I just walked by, but I noticed her backpack was on the ground next, right next to her feet, not like away from her, like the first person. And I was just like, there's people next to her and they're all laughing. And so I keep walking and I stop like 30 feet away and I look back. Those people have since walked away and now she's, she's like facing the water backpack on the ground. And like before I could even assess the situation, she's climbing over the railing like Fuck. seconds later. Wait, is this a 16 year old girl? Yeah. And so like I run up to her and like she's already down like on like the platform that's like four feet below or whatever. Uh. And I'm like trying to talk to her and it's a one-way conversation most of the time, like, and no response, nothing. She's just like crying, like on the, like over the rail, like on the ledge, like the very edge kind of thing. And this girl sees me, like, I'm not over the rail, but I'm like stepped onto the rail, trying to get as low as I possibly can, like to reach for this person or put my hand out and like try to talk to them. And this other lady comes up and like crouches down and she's like talking to her through the rail. Mm -hmm. And we're both talking to her and stuff. And dude, I would say like five or 10 minutes, maybe not 10 minutes, like five solid minutes go by, but it seems like an hour. And we finally like me and this runner, this runner stops too. And we're all trying to like get her to come back over. And she like 
puts her hand out and grabs me and that runner's hand and him and I like pull her back over. Mm. And like that whole thing was nuts. But like, and there's like more to it than that. Obviously, like that girl was super sad and she had planned it for a while or whatever and like had been there before. And I don't know, it was pretty nuts. So like, but it took Nick telling me to keep an eye on like high school kids this month for me to like intervene on those two people. Like, I don't right. know if I would have paid that much attention to those two things. And because the first kid had the backpack off who came back, it made me like really pay attention to that specific like attribute or whatever you want to call it. And it like saved that other girl. Mm. It's just like really weird how like timing and like one little like tip or something can like totally change your perspective and make you pay attention to like a little detail or whatever. Right. And what's even like, yeah, it's just crazy out there. I don't know. And like the week before all of that happened, before that kid was like the craziest Saturday ever. Like one dude was like over the rail at noon who I like later found out I knew him and I didn't know it was him over the rail. Oh shit. And, um, cause he had like a hoodie on and stuff and I didn't even know it was him until later on. And then some, a mutual friend of ours was like, Hey, did you hear about blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no. And like, yeah, dude, he was like over the rail. And I was like, holy shit, I was there that day. I just didn't know it was him. Like it was, that mm. was a crazy moment. So I didn't even find out about that for like weeks later. So that started the day. And then there was a really bad car accident, like an hour later on the bridge. And then an hour later, the first person jumped and that was pretty gnarly. Um, and then an hour after that, the second person jumped and then five minutes after that, the third person jumped. Jesus Christ. And so like that mm. started and that was like in September. And so that was just like the craziest three or four weeks of like, I would say in a five day period. No, like, a, no, seven day period. So like a full week, I'd say five people jumped and two people attempted that I like intervened on or whatever. Does this affect you mentally? Um, it's definitely not like a good thing, but I've seen so much fucked up shit that it's like, it's not anything I haven't seen before and it's not anything I couldn't handle or something. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like just being a messenger, I saw so much fucked up shit. Like I was involved in like a fatal car accident mm. in Maui when I was 17 and like someone died as I was like trying to get them out of the car and yeah. stuff. So it's like. I think about that stuff a lot and it's, I don't, yeah, I mean, it does. It's like, it's sad, but it's also like fulfilling where like, I know that I've like helped a couple people and I've witnessed cops doing <clears throat> good work, like helping people. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty sad. It definitely like, add, I would say that Saturday was the saddest because it instead of like that wave of emotion you would get from seeing something that sad, it was just like, a fucking tsunami of a mo you know what I mean it was just like yeah. a wave that just kept coming it was just like one after the other after the other and then at the end of that day it was like pretty fucking nuts just like they found so like the second person jumped and they threw out like the flare which is like this floating thing of smoke that like they throw out in the water to show, because if they can't find the body, they like throw it out where that person kind of jumped to show right. like where the current is taking them or where they should be about. And like, they couldn't find him for a while. And so I'm like looking over the rail with like one of the bridge cops because people didn't even know that the, there wasn't anyone else looking. Like it was just me and this dude. So I just figured like an extra set of eyes. And so like, as we're looking, I see the body but that was the third dude who jumped right to the side of us who we Jeez. didn't even know. Like we were looking out. And so what happened was this dude drove out onto the bridge, stopped at the mid span, right halfway in the far right lane. And there's no stopping on this bridge. No, you can't just stop in the bridge. I mean, you can. So he just stopped on the bridge, got out of the car, jumped over the rail to the sidewalk, jump over the rail into the water and died. And I see the body. So I run over to the cop and I'm like, hey, there's the dude. And that wasn't the dude. That was Fuck. the third jumper, not the second jumper. And so there was already a boat out there looking for the second dude. 
picks up. <laughs> it was just like the craziest fucking like two hours or not even two hours. It was like the craziest 90 minutes, but the craziest like 10 minutes. And that just like set September up for like the craziest month like I've ever been out there. It was, it was pretty wild. Question. Um, so let's say when you were helping that like girl who was on the ledge yeah. already over the rail, railing on the four foot under ledge on the outside of the bridge, are people just walking by? Yeah, they don't even know. Oh, shit. Or, I mean, I've been there when people go over the rail right in front of me and they don't even notice. Or they notice and don't do shit. Like, I've seen that. Where they, like, look at the person, look at the person they're with, just shrug and keep walking. Like, it's crazy. How can you not do Oh, my God. Dude, that happens all the time. (laughs) Like, there's been, like, negotiations or whatever when someone's, like, over the rail for, like, minutes. And there's people that, like, walk by or drive by that you just yell jump and shit. Like, it's so gnarly. What the fuck? Dude, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy, like, how good some people are and just how totally shitty others can be. It's pretty wild. I mean, I don't know how you could just keep walking, but they do. Mm -hmm. Some people are just so anti-confrontation and just so, like, they don't want to even be involved in anything. They just... Yeah. Which, there's a time to mind your own business and there's, like, a time to help someone when they're about to die. (laughs) Yeah. You know, or senselessly die. So it's, like, I'm kind of about minding your own business even though I, I like, specialize in taking photos of people. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I'm... I don't want to get involved unless it's something so insane. Right. Like, if someone's, like... If there's some dude, like, screaming at some fucking girl or, or, like, dragging them or harming them, like, I will get involved. But, like, if there's, like, a couple arguing, I'm not going to be like, hey, what is this about? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, like, intervene with something like that. And I think there is a time to, like, mind your own business, and I think there is a time to get involved. And I think someone stepping over the rail of a 240-foot drop bridge is a time to, to, like, (laughs) maybe get involved. Yep. Um. Certain people just probably don't even know how to handle that situation either. Yeah. Like, and it I'm may actually, be yeah. easy for people like you and I, but like other people are probably like, I don't know what the fuck to do in this situation. Yeah, or they don't even think that that's a thing. They're like, oh, maybe that's like a worker. I don't know what they think. True. I'm trying to like, yeah. they don't know that people, maybe it's so far out of like their realm right. of like a reality that they don't even know. I don't know. I'm not trying to like hate on those people. I just think like, what the fuck do you think is happening here? You know, right, like, right, right. Um, um, that takes me into a question that I do want to ask. Like in our first podcast we had, we talked about for a little bit, like confrontation for yeah. your, from your street work. Like you took a photo of a dude and he came up to you and was like, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. Got up in your face, whatever. Yeah. And like wouldn't leave it alone. Have you ran into that on the bridge? Not once. Okay. It's so photographic and so many people are like taking their own kinds of photos that I think that like no one even really realizes. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, I haven't had any bad experiences out there as far as like people getting mad. And even when I shot street photos, that only happened a couple of times. Like for the thousands of roles I've shot or like thousands of photos I've taken to have like three or four people in like the last. 12 years or something get mad at me like i don't care about that like i'll take that like but yeah at the bridge like that's never really happened Mm -hmm. um i don't know like one of the craziest things that ever happened like i dropped a roll over the rail accidentally like that was pretty funny well not funny i was so pissed at first and already shot it was shot yeah if it wasn't shot i didn't care or whatever but um like I shoot like a Leica M7 and when you take the bottom plate out to change a roll, for me, I've never dropped a roll. Like you kind of have to pull the roll out. It kind of like is in there. Huh. And for some reason, this one just dropped out the bottom. Even though I ha- I didn't just like take the plate off and it wasn't facing down. It just fell out. Oh, shit. But if that fell out in your house or on the street, it just falls on the ground. Because you're <laughs> literally like at the edge of like right, right. the earth kind of. Like, not the earth, <laughs> you're like... You're at the edge of land. The sidewalk is the only thing over this body of water. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it hit the ground, bounced, and just went through this crack in the sidewalk. Mm. And just like, I mean, it could have happened at another way and just gone the other way. 
they just happened to fall that way and bounce towards the water. Right. Um, and I was so mad at first because it was a shot roll. And then I was like, literally 10 minutes went by and I just was like, you know what? The bridge has given me so much. Like I just gave some photos to the bridge. Like I just mm. like charged to the game <laughs> and was like, all right, whatever, you can have it. And nothing on that roll was very specific that I could remember shooting. Right, so right. I wasn't like, fuck, this is that thing that I shot like 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything like that. But who the hell knows, you know? I mean, it could have been the best shot ever. I don't know what. Who knows? Yeah, but that did happen, and I was just like. It could wash up somewhere. Somebody finds it. Oh, that thing is definitely developed to blanks with all the salt water, I'm sure. I don't know. I'm sure, like, water can get in the roll. Yeah, no, it does get yeah. in. Um, I think salt water, I was, like, really obsessed with uh, soaking developed film in different chemicals yeah, and waters just like and salt alternative water. processes yeah, yeah. yeah so it gets like all like weird looking when you develop it um i think it should be fine yeah well it's down there if someone wants to go get it <laughs> it's kind of near the well, south who knows the current could have taken it somewhere else it yeah. ends up somewhere in japan it was pretty unbelievable i don't know i was just like wait what did that seriously just happen like i looked down in the beams just to see if it was like on a beam or something Fuck. it was gone but i wonder why they don't have like little curb stopper thing to like they do on the roadside this was that's why i said it. it was like if i was facing the other way oh. it would have just bounced to a curb to a ledge and then the road is on the other but side why don't they just have it on both sides i don't know they just have like that handrail it, it's whatever but that did happen <laughs> and i was like uh so that's like not an altercation but like something that happened photographically like got you to me that i was like mm. shit how many selfie sticks have you seen? Too many. It's bad. If you could name a number, how many per day? And then can we Hundreds. times that by like three? So I've seen like 8,000 of these <laughs> oh selfie sticks. God. Maybe more. So <sighs> many. They're awful. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, I wrote some notes. Oh, there was one thing that I found like a couple weeks ago that was pretty crazy. So I... <laughs> I was just like doing my thing, walking, and every now and then I like look over the rail just to check stuff out because there's like whales and dolphins down there and stuff yeah. and like actually beautiful things. It's not all dark and shitty. And then there was a wallet just sitting on the ledge and I was like, oh shit, like down the, like where that girl was standing. And I've been on a ride over the bridge before and I went to take, I had like my wallet on my, in my, in my phone in my jersey pocket like right next to each other. Um, and I went to pull my phone out of my Jersey pocket, like on my back and I pu accidentally pulled my wallet out with it and it like hit the ground and like my debit cards and everything like went everywhere. And so a couple like cars, this was on the bridge. It was a different bridge, but it's the same kind oh, of like shit. sidewalk okay. bike path. Like, um, it was, it's the exact same situation, just a different bridge. Got you. So when I see this wallet, I was like, Oh shit. Like a tourist, like dropped their wallet. So I tell one of the cops about it and was like, hey, there's a wallet over. Because obviously, like, you could maybe get that back to the person mm -hmm. or whatever. So they go up and get the wallet. And then they, like, tell me, they're like, oh, like, that could be a jumper. Like, people will leave something behind or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even, like, think about that at first. I was like, fuck. All right. Like, hoping that wasn't the case. And they didn't really have any reports of a jumper or anything. And, um, like, five hours later like a windsurfer like contacted like the coast guard or something and they like found the body and that was the wallet of the guy Fuck. so like instead of it being like a john doe or like an unidentified person they could like actually notify the family Whoa. and like get some sort of closure so i was like happy that i found it and then it turns out that like they like kind of like rewound the tape or whatever and like kind of pieced it together of like him jumping around 11 a.m. And I probably found the wallet around like 1130 or so. Mm. So like not very long after. And there was like a SD card in the wallet with like a goodbye video or some sort of like note or something like that. Fuck. Yeah. I didn't see that, but that's what I was told. Um, but yeah, that was like pretty sad. And like that's like another one of those things like little by little like – the more I learn, like, a, I don't know, not the more I learn, the more I can help. Cause like, I'm not like trying to be like neighborhood watch and 
right. be like some vigil anti like wannabe cop and the right. cops know that but like i'm out there so much that like i've definitely seen shit that they haven't seen just because like like you know when you're like speeding on the freeway and you see like a cop you kind of tap the brakes you know what i mean yeah, like we're yeah, all yeah. on our best behavior when we see a cop it's kind of like that like i see shit I see people do shit that I don't think they would do if I was like in a uniform. Right. And that's pretty interesting too. And it's kind of weird. Like I do, I see people litter all the time and I always like that actually there, there you go. That's the altercations I've been in. That is I catch me people off. litter. Like if you knowingly litter, fuck you. <laughs> like we all like produce waste. I get it. Like I try to not, I, buy i'm so minimal and i try not to buy shit and i don't shop ever like i don't buy like fast fashion anything yeah, yeah. i'm like really about little as little waste as i possibly can but fuck if you knowingly litter especially on a bridge especially in such a beautiful place like it's going directly into the ocean below you it's going into a whale's stomach for sure it's that direct and like a couple weeks ago i'm just walking and the person maybe 30 feet ahead of me puts his coffee cup down, which, dude, I've seen that a hundred times. People put the coffee cup down, they go up, take a photo, and they pick it back up and keep walking. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time, you know what I mean? Because it's hard to take photos, hold your coffee, have, yeah. if you have a bag, whatever, I get it, you know? But this dude just sets it down and just keeps, and just walks off. And I just yell, yo! He looks back, keeps walking. I pick up the coffee cup. Right, like I, it's like he's 20 feet ahead of me. By the time I yell, I pick out up, keep walking, yell again. It's like, yo, looks back at me, looks, sees the coffee cup in my hand, and keep and turns around and keeps walking. Fuck that. And I just run up, I didn't <laughs> run up to him, but I like walked fast and I roll up. I'm like, yo, fucking talking to you. Turns around, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you seriously just gonna litter like this? You know, it's gonna go into the ocean. Like, is this how you behave? Like, how old are you, dude? Mm. I think he was like 30 or something. And I hand him the coffee cup. I'm like, yeah, it was like full, like a full coffee. And I'm just like, dude, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to even like remember like what the, like how it went down. And like the girl's like, you're being like really aggressive right now. I was like, fuck you too. Like you watched him do it and you did nothing about it. You're mm -hmm. just as guilty as him. Like you saw something wrong and fucked up and you didn't call your friend out on it. So now I'm calling you out on it. I'm calling out both of you on it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, do you know how many people fucking litter every single day out here? And I just pull up my phone and show them like I have like an album of just all the trash I've like taken off. And it's not even every piece of trash I've taken off, but I just started to document it after a while. And I was like, you are this asshole. This is a thousand assholes. Fuck you. And she's like, you know, I think you've made your point. I'm like, have I? Because he hasn't said a word. The dude hasn't spoken. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you got nothing. You can't be like, dude, you're right. That was fucking dumb. I didn't think about it. Cause that's happened before I've like right. called someone out and I wasn't as aggressive because that dude looked at me, saw what I was doing and just tried to ignore it. Right. It's like, yo, we're on the middle of a fucking bridge. Like I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> like, where are you going to go? Like you can't avoid this. Like you fucked up and I'm calling you out on it. And there's been times where someone accidentally dropped something. I'm like, Hey, like you dropped this. They're like, Oh, okay. I'm like, you know, like try to keep better track of your stuff. Cause it'll go right. In the it's windy out there. You know, yeah. like, it'll go right into the ocean and it does all the time. Um, and then I've called people out who just set a cup, like in a nook. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, there's no trash cans out here. I'm like, okay, does it, okay. There's, so you just throw it in the ocean. Like what? Hang on to it. Yeah. You hang on to it because it's an empty cup that weighs two ounces. Hold on to it, fold it up, put it in your pocket, do whatever you got to do. It's not <laughs> like that excuse is such bullshit. So whatever, I'm like talking to this dude and she's like, you know, I think you made your point. I was like, have I? Because this motherfucker hasn't said a word. Uh -huh. Like, do you got nothing, dude? Like, you got nothing. And he just like walk, starts to walk away. I was like, fuck you, you fucking clown. And as he walks away, I see his bag and his he's got a tote bag that says like, stop animal testing. And I was like, you motherfucker. Like, dude, I've been vegan for like 12 years, vegetarian for like 16. Like, I'm about animal rights, but guess what? I don't fucking litter in my free time. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't be about animal rights while like causing harm directly yeah. to sea life. And so I'm like, are you joking me, dude? Like, I stop him again. I'm like, you have a fucking <laughs> animal rights bag on and you're gonna litter like this on this bridge? Like, I'm like, where are you from? He's got nothing. 
He doesn't say shit. She's just like, she says some other shit to me. I was like, dude, fuck the both of you. You guys are such clowns. And then like, I see them later on when they're leaving and I just like flip them off, like in front of my camera and <laughs> take a photo of them. So like, that's like on a roll of dude, film. Yes. There was like some other words <laughs> exchanged, but it was just like a one-sided conversation wow. with her basically saying that I'm aggressive. It's like, dude, fuck you. I'm not the asshole here. You're the asshole. I'm calling you out. Mm. You know, You know what I mean? There's like, in traffic, when someone does some stupid shit and like you honk at them yeah. and they flip you off, it's like, no, dude, not fuck me. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> I'm not the asshole here. Like, I'm calling you out right now. So, like, that. I mean, I saw that yesterday in traffic for the first time in forever. Like, I saw some guy, you know, he had a water bottle, poured out the water onto the street. Fine. Yeah. It's water. And then closes the door, rolls down the window, and then throws the plastic bottle out I the window. I just started honking. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And he was like, what did I do? Yeah. Dude, people like, are insane. Are you an idiot? Like, that bothers me. But to me, it's not as bad as littering, like, off the bridge. Like, right. when it's on the street, right, right, it'll, right. like, go on it'll the go street and street get street street cleaning, might get it. Probably. But still, it's not a good habit yeah. to get involved in. So, yeah, you did the right thing. Like, fuck that shit. But, like, the bridge, you only have seconds to save right. something before it goes over. So, like, I've seen someone set a cup down. And then a second later, the wind just right. sucked it out and it goes out to the ocean. Yeah, I just saw your Instagram video yesterday, October 30th, uh, of like some old dudes, you know. Uh, oh, the jacket. Jacket yeah. just dude, That was such a everywhere. windy day. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's windy out there. And even if you stuff trash like in a little nook. like it's dude, I see, pe- I see people stuff trash all the time. Like I called the dude out the other day. Like it's not every day, but every now and then. Like I was looking for a piece of trash I saw earlier on and I saw the dude with the coffee cup it was a coffee cup like in the railing like stuffed in this little nook and I'll keep track of that and then take it when I leave which is so sad that I have to even pay attention to that shit while I'm out there and like I see the dudes with the coffee cup and I'm like oh maybe they grabbed it because every now and then like I've seen someone grab pick up trash I'm like oh at least someone out here is caring you know what i mean like it's not their trash i see them pick up other people's trash and take it with them and then i look back to try to find the piece of trash i was looking for and then that i see that dude set his coffee cup down i was like you motherfucker like i was looking for a piece of trash that wasn't no longer there and caught a dude like littering a different piece i'm like oh my god jesus yeah dude it's really bad and it sucks and that's like my biggest pet peeve like while i'm out there it's just just knowingly littering like it's so stupid to me well and also well what's so funny is just that guy like being a total hypocrite and not being able to say something he never said a word yeah but and still, he spoke english for sure but like wearing that tote bag that's like yeah you know this this Dude, staple of like look how cool i am and it's a tote bag i probably use it for my grocery bags because i don't I don't want to use plastic and then just fucking pull in that shit. Yeah. Like, that's weird. It's super weird. And that's, like, the same, like, I don't even know what you call that shit, but, like, what is it, like, virtue signaling or something when you're just, like, on the internet crying about some problem, but, like, you're just trying Great. to get, like, attention. <laughs> well, like, he's, like, trying to get attention like he gives a shit. Right, But really, right. he's just, like, a shithead, like the people he probably cries on the internet about. You know what I'm saying? Well, and then good for you for not being conflict avoidant about it or, you know, avoiding conflict about it. And maybe now he'll wake up to it. Yeah, but I mean, this is the type of dude that's probably like, oh my God, like Donald Trump's administration is like trying to take these amount of acres away from this national park. Like, oh, he's so evil. (laughs) Yeah, that dude sucks or whatever. Like he... But guess what? <laughs> Personal responsibility is just as important. Like right. you can cry on the internet about government and what they're doing to take, make cr- shitty problems. But like, dude, you have to handle your own shit too. Like you can't create certain problems while like talking shit about other people creating problems. Right, like, right, right. That's why I like, opened it with saying like, I get it. We all use stuff. We all like buy groceries and like, use plastic. <laughs> And I try to keep it to a minimum, but it's like hard for me to like take that person seriously when I see some animal rights bullshit while I also see him causing harm potentially to another animal's life. I'm just like, you're a clown. And so I take that shit super seriously. Yeah. Also for those listening, don't get me wrong. I use plastic, um, eat meat, but I'm mindful about it as well. And I don't know. I don't wear tote bags. 
that say I'm about it. Yeah. I mean, I, don't I get what you're saying, but I'm, all, I'm pretty extreme about it because I feel like that's like an injustice. Like littering is like causing harm to something. And I feel mm-hmm. like eating meat is like causing harm to something. And I feel like being racist or using racial slurs to someone is causing harm to someone of color or whatever. And I think it's all horrible. So I just don't do any of it. Like, right. And this isn't like calling you out. I just think like people are like, oh, I like eat meat, but I'm like mindful of it. And it's like, well, I personally, like a lot of people that eat meat think it's like wrong how animals are treated. And I feel like I think it's wrong all the time. So yeah. I never eat yeah, meat. Yeah. And I think like, to me, it's like, oh, like I, I'm, I'm like, I'm racist sometimes, but I'm like mindful of it or like, I'm, okay. or like if you're like, oh, I only eat meat like a couple times a month or something. It's, I think, okay, well, I'm only racist a couple times a month. True. I feel like if it's an injustice and it's something wrong and it's something you feel strongly about and you think that it's wrong, like I think actions speak louder than words. And I think, um, I, I just feel like it's important mm-hmm. to be like consistent with your outrage or consistent with like your opinions. And I feel like this dude wasn't. And I think that that's like that hypocrisy is like a weakness in every argument. And I feel like it doesn't, I feel like people don't take you seriously if you care about something, but also cause harm to the thing you're being vocal about. Right, okay. And so I try to be as like consistent with my outrage and my ideals and what I do to the point where like, does that make sense? Where it's like, oh, like I'm like, you can't have one it, foot in, one foot out. Yeah, so it's like I feel like I try to like inspire people of like to do the best they possibly can in every way, shape, or form every day, and that's why like I call people out for littering is because they're not doing their personal best. Like mm-hmm. they're slipping, and like I think a lot of people let that shit slide, and I try not to let shit slide because I feel like it's important to hold people accountable, and I feel like personal responsibility is important, and that mm-hmm. you should do the best you possibly can. And I think it's weird when people are like. I think this is wrong, but I do it sometimes. It's like, okay, well, that's like, I'm only racist on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I just yeah. think that shit's super weird. Yep. So okay. I don't know. That's my opinion on it, but. No, yeah. no, no, no. And, that, and that gave me a you lot. directly. No, it gave me a lot to think about yeah. that. Because it is, well, again, I want to think of excuses, but like, um, you know, there's, there's certain things that, uh, it's like, what do you give a shit about more? Right. And make that like you, for most people, it's like pick one thing, make yeah. that, you know, impeccable in your life of what you want to help out and then help out with the rest. I don't know if that made sense, but like, you know, oh, I'm not going to, let's say, do airfare like yeah. because of the CO2 emissions or whatever. But I'll still continue eating the way I was and blah, blah, blah. But as as long as I'm helping out a little bit in that way. Yeah, no, definitely. Like little, little things obviously do help out. I just feel like there's, I don't know, there's like a doing little, doing your part a little bit obviously is better than nothing. But I feel like that's also like what I just said, like, oh, I'm like only racist on Wednesdays. It's right, like, right. well, that still is bad. Or it's like, well, I only smoke a little bit of crack. You know what I mean? Like I only do it every now and then. It's like, well, it's probably not that good for you. Like, it's probably not that good for society true, or whatever. True, true. Yeah. So it's like, I do believe in like moderation and I totally get what you're saying. I'm just saying like, there's like the other side of it too. It's right. like where there, I just. I well, what know. if that crack is like local, yeah. grass fed, <laughs> yeah. organic? Like. No, I get what you're saying. It's just, I, don't know, I feel like that stuff's kind of weird, but. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you because this is probably inspiring others to like look That's at themselves just how I feel. as well as And I'm just like one person me. and I don't know. It's yeah, it's just I'm one person and that's just what I try to do. And yeah. I mean, there's probably other people out there that are like me and there's probably other people that are trying to be better. So I'm, yeah, I don't know if that helped. Cool. Yeah. But that's like that's part of being out on the bridge. So it's like, I mean, we can tie it back to that. I'm just saying like that happens out there and it really bothers me because it's like, 
you've probably seen the little Instagram stories where it's like tiled photos of just all the trash. And that's like a week or two. Mm -hmm. It's like every day, every day. Like I'll take a couple trips to the trash can and the trash cans are at the ends of the bridge. Do you think that these photos are going to make it in your, um, I don't know. Do you take them on your, I shoot them with my iPhone and a film camera. Okay. Do you think that I feel like, I mean, me personally, here I go with my opinion, but I feel like that would be very important to have in a book. To, I mean, to have, like, these humans look back and be like, oh, shit, that's gross. Oh, shit, that's my coffee cup. Yeah. Or, like, maybe I don't know I what will end that. up in the book right now. Like, obviously, I've begun to pull, like, certain, like, good ones aside. Yeah. And look at them and figure out, like, where I want to go and what I want to keep doing more of and what I've gotten enough of and what I – or what I haven't really noticed before in person but I see in my photos that I want to, like, capture – or pay more attention to or something. I don't know. I'm like paying close attention, but I don't know what'll be in the book or what won't be in the book. And like, I have those photos, but it's also like, not that that's not about the bridge, but I don't know if anyone really wants to look at a bunch of handfuls of trash. I think it'll like, it could look good, like tiled together where it's like, here's a hundred little thumbnails Tiny, yeah. of yeah, like yeah. that. But that I don't think really I want to show like multiple photos of trash, like in the book. Or right. Whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, I don't know what else. Do you have anything else that you want to speak about? No. How really. do you know that you'll be done? Yeah, that's the tough thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know when I'll be done. I think at least another six months or so Mm. and maybe a year or two. I, to me, it's like, it's so important and it's like a, like a solid original body of work of some place that's like pretty iconic. Right. That I don't want to like half ass it and I don't, I'm not in like a rush to put something out. I like want to make it as best as I possibly can. And I mean, that's kind of what like the book is about is like taking this place. That's like one of the most iconic places in the world. Everyone knows Mm -hmm. about it. People travel from all over the world to go to it. And it's like super interesting to me to see how many people, like how many different kinds of people interact with the same space. It's like an eight foot sidewalk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty crazy about like all the stuff that happens out there with like, I mean, that one Saturday that I talked about that was all crazy, like that super bad car accident. I have a photo of the car accident in the background and a girl taking a selfie right in front of her. But she didn't take the selfie with the accident in the background. It was the bridge in the background. But it's just literally right in front of the accident. Like shit, like those dynamics. Humans are so weird. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it weird that your job is just, uh, analyzing humans all day, basically. Yeah, I mean, I'm people watching. watching and yeah. Like, I try not to be judgmental, but I'm definitely, like, judgmental of, like, a scene. Mm. And I'm not, like, judging that person, like, thinking that they're, like, a shitty human being. But it's crazy to me that, like, some people don't even realize, like, what's going on right next to them mm. and how their, like, actions are being, like, portrayed or what they, like, look like. And, like, it looks super uncaring, kind of. I don't know. It's really funny. But there's, like, little things like that. So that's what the book is, like, about is these crazy just interactions and things that unfold in front of me in one of the most iconic places in the world and just kind of studying how people interact with that space. It's, like, really funny because also just the backdrop of the bridge is so beautiful. Yeah. And it's so nice to be out there and... Like, downtown is fun, and there's some good photos to be had, and I inspire everyone to, like, get out there and just, like, check shit out and look uh, like look into, like, candid documentary-style, like, photography and stuff like that. But part of downtown that bothered me a lot was just, like, shopping bags and ads mm-hmm. and storefronts, and that noise has, like, for me, like, ruined a couple good shots that I really, really liked because I'm like, fuck, like, that's a sick shot, but there's, like, a T-Mobile sign in the background. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, because I feel like people, like, romanticize, like, old, like, mid-century photographs or, like, early, like, 60s and 70s, like, street photos. Mm-hmm. And there's like, not that many ads. 
No one's just looking at their iPhone. No oh, yeah. one has headphones off. So you look at these photos and everyone tries to like replicate that. Right. And it's like really hard to do. So I, I feel like in downtown, it's just funny when it's, there's something there that will like date what you're trying to do, which is kind of funny. Like you mm-hmm. can like kind of put a date to it. But if you look back at some 70s photo, it's kind of like hard to tell. I mean, I guess you could look at the cars Clothing and stuff. And cars, but yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? It's just kind of interesting to like take my same style and bring it to like a different more background with like nature and that kind of stuff in the background. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's just fun and refreshing. And I like being out there a lot. Is there a specific photo that is that you've taken from this project that's number one to you? And can you describe it? What it is? Do you have um, one that just sticks in your mind? Like, oh shit, that's the shot. There's a couple. There's like four or five that I think are pretty good that I like a lot, but Nothing that I could describe that will do it any justice. I feel like you just have to see it. Damn it. Well, I th- I mean, it's not to like <laughs> shoot down your question because that's not what no, I'm trying to do. Fine. I just feel like, I don't know. I'm more, I'm more about like re- when it's like released, like how that person feels about it. Right. than like hyping something up that I feel that, because you're not going to be there to explain every photo to every person. Right. I think photos should stand on their own. And so I feel like it's important to like not describe each photo that much or go into it that much because I feel like someone else is going to feel so much, Mm. such a different vibe or whatever to each photo where my favorite might not be their favorite at all or they might think something is going on that isn't going on or or they might think something isn't going on that is. There's just a million different scenarios. And I feel like describing a photo that no one's seen before is like really hard to do. So okay, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's why I'm out there. I'm just trying to like take as many photos as I can out there and try to get some good ones of a place that I don't know. I feel like it just deserves more of a Dude, body of work does, from the right. bridge than just that like i said in the very beginning that, those like, iconic well, shots from like yeah because those are just so school. removed they are i don't know i mean people like that kind of those kinds of photos to me they don't do that much in any nope. way shape or form i mean there's a couple they're legends, beautiful like ansel adams and stuff like some yeah. of his photos are just crazy of just those landscape shots and i mean there's a couple other people that have done great landscape stuff but a lot of that stuff is original that I think is really great, like a place I had never seen before in a in a way like that. But I feel like the bridge, it's like most of that stuff just becomes so repetitive. And yep. at this point, it's like shot with the same camera, with the same lens and the same software. I mean, it, there's not that much variety, you mm-hmm. know, but back in the day with different film stocks and different cameras and different lenses, different formats, you know what I mean? With Ansel Adams, it was like just crazy eight by 10 or whatever those were like large, those are insane yeah, yeah you know what i mean like super large format style stuff because that's not even large format right like eight by ten is a whole thing large format's like four by five right it's like 35 mil medium, medium large format is four by five six i don't know crazy giant cameras yeah i think it is eight by ten or yeah. four by five i think it's eight by ten okay but just yeah those so you have so much more variety. Yeah. You know how many people are like shooting the bridge from like a, a landscape area of like a 5D Mark IV with like <laughs> a 70 to 200. It's the exact same yeah. variable. <laughs> yeah. There's like, been some uh, cool ones I was seeing out of some guy who does San Francisco like photography tours. He does like slow shutters with like the fog moving in. And so it's all this yeah. like wispy fog with like the peaks of the bridges coming out. So like... Yeah. Those have been like the most recent ones. I've been like, oh, that's cool. But everything else is just like, yeah, no, and I'm not like hating on people no. that are out there shooting. I'm just saying like, for me, I think it's, I don't know, it, it clicked and I was like, shit, I don't, I've never seen this before. This is like totally the kind of stuff I like to shoot. I'm just going to see where I can go with it and try to 
do something a little bit different or like bring the bridge some justice where people might see it in a different way. Yep. I mean, there's so many places like that in the world where like we've seen that shot from so far away, but have we seen the up close and personal aspect of the people that visit it and interact with it and are there and I don't know, it's been fun. Hmm. I can't wait to see it. Do you have last question? Cause it's an hour 20 right now. Um, <laughs> do you have any other thoughts in your mind of things that you want to do after this project is over? Um, Besides make the book and have yeah, shows. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a whole thing. Yeah. I really, it'll be a book for sure. I would like to have like a exhibition and like a professional gallery that's pretty spacious because I'd really like to show the work in a really large scale. Right. Um, I haven't begun that process. I'm so bad, like, to be honest, I'm, like, bad at that. Like, I'm trying to get better, and it's, like, something I've been, like, working on lately of, like, reaching out. And just recently, I'm, like, showing work to a few people to try to see what they think or show it to some editors and, like, curators and stuff. Like, I've sent out a few different things to a few people, and I feel like it took a year and a half to two years of me shooting out there to get enough good ones to really do it justice. It's hard to shoot out there. Like a lot of people I think don't realize that it's not like the street, like the street, you're on a sidewalk. You can go left, right, whatever. Yep. Um, with the bridge. It's an eight foot sidewalk. It's an eight foot sidewalk. Half of it's and, a bike lane. Yep. You can't just turn left and try to get a shot. Like yep. I've missed a few shots, not because I did anything wrong and not because I missed, I missed it. It's because I literally <laughs> couldn't take the photo safely because I would have either gotten hit by a bike or crashed into a bike or made them crash. Um, it's not easy. It's really hard to like, like timing is everything kind of thing. It's really hard to line that shit up. Like I've tried to take photos. I looked left, I looked right. I went to like dip back to try to get like the framing I wanted and there was a bike there so I couldn't do it and I had to just miss that or, or take it in a different way that probably didn't come out the way I wanted it to or something, just mm -hmm. little things like that. So it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do after, but I think it'll be like a long process of like lining up a show, getting it all printed and all that. But I mean, definitely a book for sure. I don't know. I think I'll be able to get some sort of show lined up. I think it's, I think I you'll think be able like, to get a few. I think it's like interesting Most enough likely. and I think it's maybe it not is. now, but I think in time, the photos will be like San Francisco, like historical they San will, Francisco. They yeah, will, not. And like one of the things I think people don't realize right now is because the bridge is getting that suicide net, they're also having to do major changes to the other pieces of the bridge mm. to make the structural integrity like hold up. Oh, wow. So all those beams have added so much extra weight to the bridge that wasn't designed that they have to take metal away but you Holy can't shit. take metal away from the structure of the bridge. So they're having to redo the entire length of the handrail because the rail is safety, not structural. Right. So the whole handrail that we know so well of those like thick beams, it's like every six removed. inches is being changed to a totally different design. Oh shit. And like, you can see part of it. There's sections missing right now and you can see the new bridge railing on the West side. And it's not good looking. <laughs> oh, shit. So, like, these photos, I'm, like, so happy to be out there right now because I like to shoot a lot of the ships passing under mm -hmm. from directly above. And when that net goes up, you'll never be able to get those photos. And then when the new handrail goes up, it'll look way different than what the bridge currently looks like and what you've seen in books your whole life oh, and, wow. like, all that. Huh. So, like... And that's nothing I planned. It just happened this way. But by the time I'm done shooting, because it won't, be, th that construction won't be done for like another two years. So I hopefully will be done by then. Like the whole bridge will look totally different. And so I think younger people that haven't visited the bridge and that are super young right now. So in like 10 years or 15 years or whenever, they're like, 
20 or 25, you know, they'll see a bridge that isn't the way it is right now. And that's the first time in its existence since it wow. opened where that'll be. Wow. So that's kind of interesting too. And I feel like looking back at these photos taken from the platform, like the sidewalk, <clears throat> I don't know if you'll pick up that detail mm -hmm. on those landscape shots because they're so far away. Like you'll obviously get like the major, um, like the structure of the bridge and obviously yeah. the towers and the view. But I just think that like the up close and personal like details are going to be so much different. And I don't know, I feel really fortunate to be able to like document it before it changes. And again, this wasn't planned. It just is like the way it's happening. So yeah, I mean, two miles of the, it's actually four total miles because the miles, the, the bridge is about two miles long and each side will be completely replaced. So four total miles of new handrail and they're like thinner and lighter because they need to. Are they like a the different weight. color or the same color? No, they'll paint it the same color. Okay. It's just completely different looking. Um, Ew. Yeah. And I don't think people know that. They'll find out in a year or two. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> when I take my mom again, I'll find out. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I don't know. I gotta go to the bridge. Cool. I'll um, I do want to follow up when the book is being made, yeah. when you're finished, when the show's coming, see how it For feels, sure. what prompted you to finish the project, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, definitely. I mean. Right now, I haven't, like, lost that spark or drive. I feel like there's more. Like, I'm still digging. I feel mm -hmm. like there's more to, like, get out of there. Right. Um, I think there's more gold to dig up. So. Also, really quick, how many photos do you take a day? Every day is different. Um, sometimes I shoot two rolls. Sometimes I shoot six. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll shoot six on a Saturday because there's a ton of people. Sometimes I'll shoot a roll on a Saturday because mm -hmm. there is a ton of people, but not photo photogenic or photographic. It's just, I don't know. I shoot when I shoot and I don't really like keep track of it. Like not in a bad way. I'm just saying like, I know about how many rolls a day I shoot, but I'm not like, oh, like today I only shot two rolls. It was a waste. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. think of it like that. I just think of, sometimes I'm like, fuck, like I shot six rolls today. Like that was pretty productive or that must have just, mm. I do think that, but I'm never like, cause some days aren't that good. Some days you just walk all day and it's pretty dead or pretty uneventful or you're, sometimes my timing is just off. There's been days where like, I'm just 10 feet away from like every shot that day. Mm. And that's like kind of shitty, but it happens. You know what I mean? Where it just unfolds in yeah. front of you and you saw it but you weren't like there. in the right yeah. space to get it. It's, we all have that. I think if, if you're listening and you shoot, it's it just kind of like you see it for that second and it just unfolds and you're like, it's gone. Yep. And I just try to like capitalize on those moments as much as I can where luck is when opportunity meets preparation. And I try to create my own luck, but every now and then some slip through the cracks. Hmm. Just like that roll of film. Just like the roll of film. <laughs> yeah, that was 36 shots slipped through the crack Jeez, that day. Jeez, dude. Somebody will find it one day. It will wash up on a beach in Japan. <sighs> Depending on where the current goes. It might, <laughs> yeah. it might just go to Oakland, but yeah. Or Oakland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a short trip. True. Cool. Well, yeah, thank you. Let's get you to the bridge. Um, thank you. Uh, can't wait to see the final product. Yeah. Yay. Thanks. See you guys.